Steam House with your hosts, Jack Murphy and David Park. Yeah, let's yeah. let's uh, go into that mission. I'd really like to hear about that, uh, where, you know, the Ranger Regiment and the SEALs, one of the, what are the SEAL team guys, you, did, you guys had a team up going into Sodder City. Um, so I was wondering yeah. if you could tell us about that. Yeah, so um, I haven't talked about this. I was about, you know, I was told everything's classified or whatever, but like, yeah, pass. I don't think I'm going to get in trouble for it. But so it was actually the anniversary. It was two two days ago. So um, on the 20th, I believe, or 21st of October, uh, we were trying to find a Iranian bomb maker in the area of Sadr City, Iraq. And we were ready to go around midnight. It was a gap, which is round. Um, so we were taking strikers in. Um, we were ready to go at like midnight and they kept pushing back the time because they were waiting to get the go call, you know, and they kept pushing back the time and they were waiting to get the go call. And we got the go call at about 4.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. And I remember we were like, well, are we going? Like, this is Sodder City right. and it's 4.30 in the morning and everybody's looking at their watch and the sun is starting to come up basically as we're about to go into the strikers. Right. And so I just imagine like, well, they're going to call it off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> They're going to call it off. Uh, they're going to call it off, right? And they're like, no, they didn't call it off. Uh, so we went in strikers um, and uh, my, my first squad leader who, who cycled out to become a weapons squad leader uh, was actually the, the gunner on the striker. And I remember a lot of the speed. And when you're a striker, you have to kind of use your core and your legs to kind of like balance yourself. Because when you get speed in those things, they're so powerful. It's not like you're sitting like this. Like you get kind of jostled around. And I remember I, I, I could feel how fast we were going based on how much I had to tense myself. And then my squad leader just starts opening up. And he's in the turret and he doesn't have a 50 and he just he's using his he's using his M4 and he's just pop, 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 pop. and we're still driving at a high rate of speed. And then I start hearing all these things hitting the side of our, our striker. And it sounds like you know what you hear about, where it sounds like hail hitting the side, and it's a like, bing, 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 bing. And we were getting shot out with AK rounds or whatever. And so uh we were taking fire probably for about a minute or two. Uh, before we even stopped and when we did stop we went from however fast we were going to stopping and so all of a sudden we stop door goes down and i'm the first dude off this is my first taste of combat and i am the first guy off and i'm just like like this and i right away i see you know an, an old woman and three kids like chewing their kids inside and i'm like looking around like trying to get ready to engage or whatever and i'm like ritual ritual grab the ladder and like so i forgot my job was to help grab the ladder for sniper overwatch thankfully i did the right thing with my training which is like you know get up and be ready to engage right. but yeah like i had to like go back into it so i'm the first guy off and like and so i have to go back uh into into the striker and grab the ladder and we needed the ladders to scale into the compound so thankfully we got them all it, but uh, Ross, I got out. Ross, just to yeah, understand yeah. The, the composition of the team, I mean, was at this point the mm. operation was just Rangers or were the SEALs embedded or did they come later? How did that work? No, we were uh, we were tasked up evenly. I think I had, I might have had three SEALs with me because again, I was I was the sniper overwatch. Okay. So, so we, this, I was under the impression that this was a kind of sampling where they were having for really kind of the first times you were having two different JSOC elements doing DA together. Mm. So we were training together to go on the objective together. Okay. Like, you know, and so that's like the composition of the force was something like, you know, a platoon of Rangers. And then I think it was like maybe two squads of seals from seal team to our town. Mm. And, and so like, I think I had the seal CO and I, uh, striker and I think he had like two guys with him or whatever and I, I might be wrong that I can't really remember but I remember that's kind of how it was split up um, and then you probably had um, the line squads and ranger regiment all in one you know what I mean but like for me I was on sniper overwatch so I was with my two sniper sergeants and the other the other specialist that was with me um, and then the rest of the guys in there were you know seal guys 
Um, and uh, so that was that was the composition of it, if that answers your question. Yeah. I think we probably had five or six, we probably had five or six strikers. Um, and so, yeah, like I was the first guy off when I got off, the dust was still settling. Like this was not a gentle exfil. This was a hot exfil. This was a fast exfil. And then um, we were in Saturday, the sun was up. Uh, we had to go to a, the objective was a schoolhouse. So it was a big, big compound in the middle of, you know, Cider City and uh, everybody and their mother knew we were there and uh, they came and we scaled the walls. We cleared the compound. The target was not there, but the people that came were there in force. And the CSR team that I was tasked out to for the rest of the point were seeing the mission um, in a talk that was not in biop. So like people, I guess, heard about this mission pretty far away and uh general mccrystal mentions it in his biography um and so it was a mission that was kind of said to be like little mogadishu um and, and you know everybody kind of like hollywood's everything anyway but i do remember when it got back you know one of the the, the squad leaders was like you motherfuckers like he was just he was he was like jealous that he wasn't on it you know yeah. what i mean so and for me, it was just like, I remember being like, is that how everything is? And they were like, no, <laughs> that's not how everything is. And it was, you know, it was, it was just really, it was very scary. It was very overwhelming. Um, you know, it was sobering. It was, it was, I, I looked at my watch at one point, it was 6.30 in the morning. And I remember just being like, I'm getting shot at on my diet here. And my buddies are probably, you know, like having a good time together in college or whatever i was like what did i do yeah. like what did i what was i thinking yeah. you know what i mean what, um, what, what did so, happen yeah. when you got to that schoolhouse you guys secured the objective and then what the mongolian horde just comes down on you guys it was just uh it, it was just a we need to get out of here quick yeah it, this is bad we're not going to be able to hold this um so they actually called in helicopter gunships they called in a tank um they had the strikers knocked down at least my striker knocked down the compound wall dropped its door so we ran in to the striker uh we were there for about an hour and a half um they started engaging targets with the helicopter gunships and you know there was uh you know the <laughs> you know the the civilian casualties were you know reported in the press which is awful um that was hard to deal with because you know it was all over the news before we got back right like we got back to the compound and it was already on cnn you know what i mean and and um you know like listen i i i'm a i'm a softie at heart you know yeah. like i didn't want to kill the wrong people or being i didn't kill anybody you know but i was part of it and you know i had to take people off and you know isolate people or whatever and so that was one of those things where we didn't have a scratch like mm -hmm. literally nobody in our element took any kind of wound mm -hmm. but to see the but to see what we dealt out was really pretty intense like you know the the first the first counts were over 100 mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then as the reports and the press came out it was anywhere from like 49 to 76 mm -hmm. you know what i mean and of course my thing most of those counts were there were reports of civilian casualties mm -hmm. and so i'm thinking the higher totals might be true because the locals might not want to count combatants but the civilians might be legit you know or whatever but anyway it's just it was one of those things where like it, it just shows you how how bad things can get how quickly they can get it um and uh yeah it was it was one of those things where it's like hey you want the war here it is you know what i mean and and it was really crazy because after we were leaving the objective an ied went off and it was like all this noise all this noise i <laughs> And I remember the detritus fell through the open hatch, you know, kind of like sprinkled down like confetti. And then it was just quiet. Mm -hmm. And it was, that was it. It was over. Mm -hmm. And we drove back quietly for 30 minutes. And then the guys had like spicy chorizo burritos. And I went and worked out and called my girlfriend. 
And then she goes, hey, this is the only time, the only time the whole deployment she asked me. She goes, hey, I just saw something on the news. Was it you? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and, then right when I, and then right when I saw her, like in person, I was like, you were right. Like that was, that was awesome. She's like, yeah, I had a feeling. You know what I mean? And yeah. She was like, I didn't, I didn't watch the news or look at it at all when you were gone. And that one day I saw it and I had a really bad feeling. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, you're a smart lady. You know? <laughs> so I, yeah. I, it, know, it was I, intense. Yeah. I think for maybe the people who aren't aware of sort of what Sodder City was and, and why that name is kind of mythical, I guess.